Hey, what's going on guys? So today, we're not out there again. Today, we're gonna do a quick walk around of the Jeep. I had a couple buddies that asked me to do a walk around, so hey, we're gonna go ahead and knock it out because it does have quite a bit of things and usually I call this one the sleeper because it doesn't look like much, but it does have quite a bit of goodies underneath it. So let's go ahead and start it. All right guys, so let's get started on it. So, okay, on the front, let's get started on the front. We still have the original bumper, of course, on the front, we do have this little grill guard that I picked up on Facebook Marketplace. Of course, you could pick up a lot of stuff there. I picked this one up and this one, I, I did hook up a recovery hook to it. And this one is bolted to the bracket that supports my winch, which is bolted on directly to the unit body. So this thing is actually pretty strong. And so this thing, could I could pull anything with it or they could pull me out. So the that's what we have here for this one. And of course, I do have this one. We do have some KC lights up here that I picked up a while ago. I love these lights, they haven't let me down. So we got KC lights in the front. As far as the winch, we did, that's a recent addition to it. We did pick up a worn BR 8,000 pound winch. Picked it up from one of my cousins. And on this one, I did make a custom hidden winch bracket. I know they sell one, but I had a lot of spare metal from that the spare metal plate from that tire carrier I built. So on this one, I wanted to make my own uh, bracket and it actually end up, ended up looking pretty good. As you guys could see, it's hidden. Like you can see, I didn't have to trim a whole lot. So it's hidden. I do have a, a couple clips if anybody wants to see them on how I made it, but it's made with half inch plate. So that thing is strong. We already tried it out. We pulled out a Dodge Ram 2500, one of my buddies. We pulled them out with it. So, it works, it didn't break, so hey, it's a win. And uh, man, I do love that winch. It's awesome, it does have a steel cable. Later on, we'll probably replace it with one of those uh, synthetic ropes. But for right now, we're just gonna leave it like that. That would have been coming, that would have come in handy when we got stuck in the snow, but we didn't have it, now we do. So we'll probably hit up some harder trails. Probably next week, we'll see a video with a harder trail. So that's what we got, we got, our grill gun, we got some Casey lights in the front. We got our worn winch tucked and hidden underneath. And then all on the outside as well, we have uh, some Casey lights up here on some Walmart mounts. Oh, man, those Walmart mounts came in clutch. Those lights, they also KC lights. I love those lights, they're awesome, especially at night. So, well, obviously at night, but they're awesome lights. Love those Casey lights. Oh, look at Casey down there. Hi, Casey. All right, so, okay, so let's keep on going with what we got. So, we got KC lights up there. As far as our rooftop tent, I love this rooftop tent. I could have picked it up years ago. It's a Tough Stuff Overland rooftop tent with the awning that hooks up, like, for another room. Love that thing. We've been using it for a couple of years. No complaints. And as you guys could see, what I used to mount it, I saw this from another YouTuber. I don't remember his, uh, his channel's name, but he has a, a WJ. Pretty cool build also. He used a one by one uh, square tubing as a bracket and some exhaust um, brackets. So, man, that thing's, I've had it up there for a couple years already. I did plan on replacing these with some other ones, but hey, if it works, it works. So that's what we got up there as far as our rooftop tent. And over here on the back, we do have another light out here for, this is a new addition. I just added this one for when we go camping. I picked this one up at Walmart, I think, as well, with one of those Walmart brackets. They're awesome. I picked them up on clearance. This was like seven bucks. This light was 13 bucks. Bright as heck. And that one's gonna be awesome for either when we get stuck at night or when we show up to camp at night. All right, and another thing on the outside, as you guys see, we got our homemade DIY tire carrier. Tire carrier is done awesome. We've hooked up a tire a trash bag on it. It does awesome, you guys could see it. We do have our 33 inch tire, of course we do have stock wheels. But, I mean, I like the look of it and that tire carrier has been great so far. So that's what we got in the back. Okay, over here on the side, this awning, I picked it up from one of my buddies, Cava Outdoors. I picked this up years ago as well. I've been doing this for years, guys. And that one is a, like an eBay one, nothing fancy, but it works awesome. I've had it for, I mean, I've had it for about, I'd say about five, six years, and it works awesome. It hasn't broken on me. As long as you tie them down, they won't break. So that thing's awesome. 
All right, so let's continue. As far as tires, tire and wheel combo, we do have these Milestar Patagonias. I love these tires, guys. I've had them for a while. We do have the stock wheels with a one inch spacer. I did add that one inch spacer on there. But as far as the tires, some people complain about them. I love these tires. I lowered the pressure down. And of course, they're missing chunks, but hey, that's because uh, we do use them. We use them on the rocks, we use them in the snow, we use them dirt everywhere. They have not failed me. So, as far as tires, that's what we got. We had them for a couple of years as well. And nothing but great things to say about these mile stars. Love them, probably replace them. Might go with some 35s, but we still don't know. So that's as far as tires. All right, as far as our our, uh, our rock sliders. As far as our rock sliders, these, another DIY project. I made a video of how I made them. Uh, I made them for one of my buddies. And boom, I've used a high lift jack on it. Uh, I don't need, like high lift jacks. Busted my face once with them, so I don't use them. But you could actually use a high lift jack on it. Let me show you how I mounted it. All right, it's bolted directly to the unibody. Three bolts right there and there are three bolts over there with of course that half inch plate that i had uh from the from the tire carrier we had enough to build them because i had it mounted a different way but i didn't really like it. it wasn't too strong but with this it's rock solid so i love this thing so that's what we got as far as the exterior let's go underneath and check out this suspension for suspension this is our second setup we have our first setup was a rough country suspension, which don't get me wrong, the rough country, it works. I mean, it works if you're just go off-roading once in a while, don't put a whole lot of weight. But once we loaded this one, we went off-roading, the rears sagged as soon as we loaded all our equipment on it. It sagged to the point where it didn't even look like we had a lift. So we have a different setup. On the front, we got some, Playton, Playton off-road uh, dual rate springs. As you can see them, they're six inch springs. The dual rate, I love those springs. Had them for a couple of months already. Nothing but great things to say about those springs. I mean, I flex this one out to where the tire was completely off the ground and those springs do not pop out. If you guys know on some of these Jeeps, that's one of the things you do. You flex it too much, your spring pops off. This one, I mean, they haven't so far. So those are the six inch dual rate springs from Clayton Off-Road. And, but on this one, I do have an additional two inch spacer. I know a lot of people like them up on top, but I put them on the bottom and I love it. And I'm gonna leave them there no matter what. Anybody tells me we're gonna leave those two inch spacers on the bottom. We've off-roaded, we've done a bunch of things with it. Love it, they stay, no issues, bada beam, bada boom. But yes, so we got rid of the rough country. The only thing rough country that we do have is the rough country uh, track bar, which I can't lie, I haven't had no issues with it. Nothing's broken. It's done great, easy to adjust, no problems at all. Okay, so that's for the track bar. As far as our steering stabilizer, on these two trucks, I do have, let me show you right quick, the steering stabilizer that I have on these two. But I mean, I only have it on these two. On the Jeep, I wanted to do something different. You guys see those? We have some pro comps on this one. So those right there, I ran them on these trucks forever. But on the Jeep, I did go a different route. I did decide to go with, um, let me see who's a manufacturer that makes this one. These are made by a company named Kevin Off-Road. Kevin Off-Road Hidden Dual Cylinder Stabilizer. I mean, I haven't had death wobble. Hopefully I don't, but you can see, you use the original spot for one, original location, and then they give you brackets to set the other one up here. And those are Monroe part numbers, I believe. So whenever it comes time to replace them, no I should just throw that number online, pick up replacements, great. Easy to install, super easy. Never had an issue with them. Never had death wobble. But one thing about death wobble, just throwing it out there. A lot of people think that track bar this, that whenever you do experience death wobble and your suspension doesn't have play, you feel everything's good, check out your caster. Your caster pinion angle makes a hell of a difference when it comes to death wobble. Even as simple as a couple degrees, a degree, it makes a hell of a difference. So if you guys ever experience death wobble, check out your caster, check out your alignment. 
trust me a lot of people and eh, now that can't work trust me it works check out the shopping carts there's caster wheels in the front that's why they move like that so check out your alignment if you ever do have death wobble and everything seems to be fine so let's continue so that's what we got we got that dual cylinder st stabilizer awesome loved it had it for a couple years already as far as our sway bars we do have the uh disconnect sway bars from rough country the ones that came with the original kit i have i had on them so we still keep those they work great take them off hook them up up there go off-roading not an issue at all all right and then for our pitman arm our pitman arm we ran this stock one for a while but then a couple months ago i decided to get the extend the drop pitman arm from yes i got it from rough country again but i haven't had no problems with it it's been great no issues only thing i had to adjust was what did i have to adjust oh just my alignment my uh my steering wheel so and that's easy adjusting it right there so that was it's been great haven't had no issues with it been working perfect for our front diff we do have the stock dana 30 and we do have as you guys seen that spartan locker a lot of people don't i've heard don't like the spartan locker luckily we don't live in a place that i drive a lot in ice i mean we do go snow wheeling but that's usually just off-road but i do have that spartan locker down there and another thing nothing but great things to say about that locker it has been great it hasn't it just ratchets a little bit but it's not even loud this one's not loud i've heard others that are super loud this one's not loud i love this locker i'll if i ever get another one i'll keep on running spartan lockers they're awesome not promoting them but hey if they're good you gotta let people know so we do run spartan locker in the front diff dana 30 as far as cv axles another thing people have asked me hey why don't you put some heavy duty cv axles change them up the reason i don't because i'm still running the stock one is because if something breaks off road i want something that i could still drive out of the trail with so if i break a cv axle i could still limp it out three wheel drive two wheel drive because if i put those badass cv axles on it don't break i'm not going to break the cv axle it's going to go to the next week it's link which is going to be that differential the dana 30. i'm going to break a ring i'm going to break a pinion and a lot of times when you break some of that you're going to be driving it out that easy from the trail and it's going to get pricey to replace i got a lifetime warranty on the cv axles i haven't broken them knock on wood but like i say a lot of people break them because they spin the wheels i as you guys can see i come from a, i used to be more a performance guy till i had kids so i used to have mustangs and all that and you guys know spinning like i say spinning ain't winning so you do not want to spin those wheels you spin them pick up immediate traction you're going to break cv axles regardless of what you're driving you guys have seen it i've seen dana 60s all those one tons have to all those i've seen them break and same thing they spin the wheels pick up traction you break them so remember spinning ain't winning so yes and i'm going to keep on running the stock cvs for a while until we decide to upgrade the differential to a dana 44 but nothing in the near future so we're still going to run the dana 30 for a while so that's what we got in the front as far as control arms all right here's another tricky one as far as control arms i do have the rough country lower control arms the rough country lower control arms but the heim joints the rough country ones suck i'm not gonna sugarcoat it they sucked not because i off-road it nothing i put them on they weren't the adjustable ones the rebuildable ones there were the solid ones as soon as i put them on I heard clicking, banging every time I hit a anything. They were they were bad. I contacted Rough Country. They said they were gonna send me replacements. Never did. So I chucked them. I took them off. I got these from I believe Kevin Off Road as well. I got these right here. Uh, replaced them. I used the Rough Country arm, but I replaced these. And these are the rebuildable ones. They do have a loop point. And ever since I did that, no issues at all. No noises, it runs great. So that's what we have on the lowers. On the uppers, we do have, uh, you can't really see it. We can see it from over here. 
We do have some eBay ones. I picked these up cheap on eBay. Nothing special. They are adjustable ones because I did move the differential up forward once I put these 33s. I do have them. You can see them down there. There's some eBay ones. I mean, I haven't had no issue with them. They're not. They're just a solid bushing. So they're not a heim joint or nothing like that. But they work. They've worked for me. No issues at all. All right, guys, and for our drive shaft, as you guys can see right here, the drive shaft we picked it up from Carolina Drive Line. Because um, if you guys know, when I did the lift, we had the CB axle type of drive shaft, and it whines. It's horrible. It whines. So we we knew we were gonna replace it. So I called Carolina Drive Line. I just gave them simple thing. Gave them the measurements. They gave me what goes on the on the diff on the on the transfer case the whole kit it was complete kit bolted on no issues at all and it, it is lubable so i mean i've loved it i beat the crap out of it it does have a couple dents but it is awesome so carolina driveline that's awesome that's probably where i'm going to get my uh, drive shaft for the rear once i we do some other suspension work to it that's where i'm going to get it because I loved it and it was quick. It was also pre-COVID, so that's probably why it was faster. So, let's go to the back. In the back, we do have Rusty's off-road springs. Let's go, if you can show them back here. In the back, we do have Rusty's off-road springs, like I told you guys. We did have the rough country, but those sagged. I called uh, Rusty's off-road. I asked them that I need something that is gonna hold weight, tire carrier bumpers, weight. They told me these are good. You could tell the thickness, so they're heavy duty. The thickness compared to the original ones, it is a big difference, and it is a huge difference. When we load this thing up completely with the basket, inside, outside, everything, it only drops about half an inch to an inch maybe, which is a huge plus, so I love that. And on the shocks in the back, we also have Rusty's eight inch shocks for their, uh, the eight inch lift. So I like them, they're good. They're okay, but I'm probably eventually gonna replace them to the same thing we have in the front, which is the bill signs. So probably put bill signs in the rear, just so they could be the same matching front and rear, but these work. I, I'll probably still have them for a couple more months. They work, I like them, no issues. On the lower control arms, on the lower control arms in the rear, you guys can see those orange ones down there. They're the they're eBay ones, they're eBay adjustable ones. Nothing fancy, they're not heim joints, they're just solid bushings, they work. It helped me adjust my pinion angle. Once again, remember, pinion angle doesn't just count in the front, also in the back. It helped me adjust my pinion angle. So, because I was heard, hearing a tad, I mean, very little whining, um, but I adjusted my pinion angle and we got rid of it. That's it. Pinion angle has got to match your T case. So, we got that knocked out, no problem. On the rear upper, we do have the Rough Country Spacer, which we still keep stock controller on eight inch lift but let me tell you how i did it the stock controller on the eight inch lift when the control arm flexes all the way down it does bind it does hit on one of the on the bracket up there let me see if i could show you guys so this right here perfect okay. this right here this control arm that's the stock control arm it would hit right here so you could see i notched it just a tad right there so that's been notched and no issues at all. It doesn't hit, rub or anything. Did it on both sides and we're using the stock control arm. We are gonna replace the control arm. We are gonna go, we did, we are gonna go with an adjustable one because I do want to push these tires a tad back more. But I know they sell one. It's about 300 and something bucks for an upper control arm. I'm gonna build one. So make sure you subscribe so you can see how I'm gonna build one. I'm gonna build it nice, strong. It's probably gonna be pretty cheap cost effective let's put it that way cost effective so we're gonna build that rear upper control arm adjustable we're gonna make it adjustable because later on plans are we are gonna build a long arm for it and i'm gonna build it i'm not gonna buy it i'm gonna build it because building you save a ton of money you guys have no idea how much money i've saved building my own stuff of course you do invest in your tools and all that but that's an investment because you'll be able to reuse them use them use them use them and use them so we're gonna be building that, so make sure you stay subscribed, hit the like button, all that good stuff, the bell. That way you guys know when I post a new video because we got plenty of videos coming up. So that's what we got in the rear suspension. On the rear differential, 
the rear differential down here, we do have the stock Dana 30. Well, I wouldn't call it uh, Dana 35. But I also have on that day if we do have a Spartan locker. I did put the Spartan locker before I put the back, before I put the front one, because I didn't know if I was gonna like it too loud, because I've heard others uh, that are super loud. This one, this one is quiet. Maybe on Wranglers it's louder because the Wranglers is such small, short wheelbase. This one's bigger, so you can't hear it. It's some um, wife doesn't even know. She doesn't even know what a locker is. She drives it. She doesn't. She doesn't complain about anything. And she's one to complain about any little noises. So she hasn't complained. So that gives you a clue, uh, a hint of they're not loud. So we do have a Spartan locker in the back. I love it. So quick one. If you guys are thinking going front or rear, go with the rear locker first. You're gonna love it. Try it. Love it, and then hit the front one. Once you get off all uh, front and back, these things are awesome. So that's what we got in the rear differential. So let's go under the hood so you guys can see what we got. Under the hood, we do have our 4.0 inline six. I love it. Uh, wish I had more power, but it's all right. I love it. We ain't trying to go fast to go fast. That's why we got that one. But we do have, which is not mine, it's gonna be my kids. My cameraman, that's what I'm painting them with. So we do have the inline six, uh, 4.0. I love it. It's reliable. Of course, you guys know it. You'll replace uh, crank sensors. You'll replace coils, cam sensor. Those are your alternator. Those are, you know, you own one of these, you're going to be replacing them. Well, we've added to it. We've added this little colder intake picked up on eBay. Love it. We do have a one inch uh, throttle body spacer down there. Also, I didn't notice any difference, but I still got to put it on. And if you guys see this big thing over here, we did a little bit of an upgrade. I have a video. If anybody wants to see it, let me know. I'll show you how I did this. I picked up a compressor at the swap. I think it was like 15 bucks. Only thing I picked it up was for this two gallon tank. So what I did, I wired and I mounted our, compre our ARB compressor. I used everything that came with that compressor. I used it, modified it. And we went down from eight minutes per tire airing up because this is a single piston old school compressor right here arb love it doesn't give out probably still keep it for a while and now we went down from eight minutes to i think two and a half minutes per tire so that's a huge plus and we'll have onboard air dust everything out last time we went off-roading i tried it out dusted the engine bay off so it this is a this was a great addition to it that's what i've always wanted to do uh get a tank but i couldn't figure out where to put it how big so this was a perfect fit it's bolted on sturdy in there it works awesome so that's pretty much leave everything on the outside if i missed anything guys let me know i'll let you guys know what else i got so the inside let me show you guys on the inside inside the basic i like basic i don't like no bulky stuff brackets up here nothing like that we're keeping it basic in here just our cell phone mount Radio, aftermarket radio, nothing fancy, all pretty much stock. Our switch, we don't have a switch panel, but this is where I have it. Compressor, KC lights, KC lights. Those are all my switches, they're all right here, left hand side. Probably gonna keep them like that eventually. We might, if we add more stuff, I'll get a little panel, put it here, but that's how it's gonna stay for right now. So that's our lights. And I love it, it's gonna stay like that. And everything else you guys see, it's basic, nothing, nothing fancy and gets things done. And let's go to the back. All right, quick update, tire carrier is doing awesome. Awesome tire carrier. So for the back, for the back, this is what we got. We always carry our traction boards. I don't know if I'm gonna keep them now that we have the winch. Mm, I mean, I used them last time, but I usually use them for other people and uh, Art, we should have used these when you got stuck on your ramp, but uh, I don't know if I'm gonna keep them. Might keep them, might not keep them, but they're back there. And of course, no space goes unwasted down here. It's a little empty right now because we went uh, picnic, whatever. We use some of the stuff. I have recovery gear. I got my rope that I use in case we need to winch off a tree. That way we don't damage or hurt the tree. We have our air tools, air to air up, shovel, we have our basic tools, everything gets used. We usually have chairs, everything in here. So 
we are not going to waste the space so this is awesome to have that available now that we have a tire out there and then we have our winch controller over here easy axis and the other thing i've added this is a quick hint for everybody that has a 99 to a 2000 model um this one did not come with this 12 volt outlet or original equipment it just ha it does come with the hole but jeep didn't put anything but pick this one up either you can pick it up bottles on o'reilly i picked it up at a junkyard at the u pull it was like a dollar or two i picked it up wiring is in there jeep just left it in there they didn't i don't know why the, the wiring is pre-wired in there it works you don't need to add no fuse nothing wiring is in there i just hooked it up bada beam bada boom this is where i use for that outside light just hook it up boom this is for my outside light but i use it here for when we go for extended trips where we use the the fridge anything like that just hook it up to that so those are for the older wjs that didn't come with it just pick one up put it on you'll be set so guys that's pretty much everything we got going on this is all oh, let me show you guys i don't know if i showed you guys already but this is our off-road light that we installed let me take the close the tailgate that's the one we installed we picked it up at walmart it was like seven bucks for the bracket 13 bucks for the light and it's bright it would have worked awesome when we got stuck but it's awesome we're gonna try it out i haven't tried it out as far as going camping i tried it out here so stay tuned we'll put some more videos and all right guys so closing it up stay tuned we'll have a lot more videos if you guys want to know how i did anything to it how i figured it out macgyvered it just let me know shoot it in the comments i'll be more than happy to answer it eventually we will be taking that one out to the dunes so you can see the power that that one has that one's just awesome but that one has plenty of power but today's all about the wj i love this thing probably gonna keep it for a while so stay tuned subscribe you guys do all that good stuff and hit the trails go out there next week you'll guys see a video we're gonna hit some rocky trails with this one cameraman right there is gonna be driving it he's a hell of a driver he's gonna be a hell of a driver so stay tuned and be safe we'll see you next video bye